There are very few shows from the early 2000s that built as deep of a world as the Avatar series. And yes, it would get a follow-up later on with The Legend of Korra, but in the meantime, there were still plenty of fans that were ravenous for more Avatar content to consume. That's where the comics come into play, and wow, there are a lot of them, expanding the show past its final episode. But for as great as those are, they aren't what I'm here to talk about today. You see, there are actually a bunch of Avatar comics that came out before these that kind of flew under the radar and I never really see anybody talk about them online. And it makes a lot of sense considering that the releases were very scattered. I mean, some were in Nick Magazine, some were in Nick Comics Presents, some were included in the Avatar DVD box sets. Like, it was just really, really difficult in order to track all these down. What I think makes these particular comics special is that they don't just extend the series past its final episode, and they instead take place between the various episodes of the show. Some of them are cute little one-off gags, some of them fill in minor plot details, but the really cool ones, in my opinion, are the ones that feel like they are complete episodes that would feel right at home in the series itself, which makes a lot of sense because many writers that worked on the show also worked on these comics. Like I said, the initial releases were scattered all over the place, but in 2011, we got this from Dark Horse Comics, Avatar The Last Airbender, The Lost Adventures, which is all of these various comics put together in one convenient place with some extra content thrown in for good measure. These stories can range from short to super duper short. I'm talking like only two pages long. So in total, there are 28 stories in here, and even though they're short, it's still going to be a marathon to get through these. Yikes. Be calm. It's basic slapstick where Aang gets covered with a swarm of scorpion bees and defeats them by tiring them out with smoke. Don't blow it. Aang gets a cold and his sneezes are as over the top as you'd expect them to be coming from an airbender. He refuses Katara's home remedy, but his sneezes get so bad that Fire Nation scouts are able to find their camp. As a result, Aang is literally tied up by Sokka and Katara and forced to take the medicine. Water War. Some kids are playing pranks with water, so Katara does some water bending and gets them back. Relics. Aang finds an airbender pendant at a merchant's shop and tries to discover its origin. He breaks away from the team and discovers discovers an air nomad structure that is filled to the brim with objects from his lost culture. But it turns out that this was simply an ambush that was set up by Admiral Zhao. You see, homes like these were set up by Fire Lord Sozin when he was hunting down the Air Nomads in order to lure in and capture refugees. Aang, having played with relics like these for his entire life, uses them to escape custody, and Zhao is defeated with his head in what is implied to be a chamber pot. The story ends on this really sad shot of Katara talking about how airbenders would have been attracted to these mountains, and Aang is reflecting on the genocide of his people. And then we follow up that dark and somber moment with fruit Stand Pressure, a silent slapstick comic about Momo trying to steal fruit and the chaos that ensues. Sleep Bending Aang is bending both air and earth in his sleep, which causes a lot of chaos and even an avalanche. Lessons. Toph is teaching Aang to listen to the Earth, but Sokka is being his usual loud self and making things very, very difficult, leading to Toph leaving him stranded on a rock pillar. Sokka the Avatar. Team Avatar lands in a village, and Sokka asks out a girl that he just met, but he gets rejected pretty hard. Now, Sokka tries to impress her by explaining that he travels with the Avatar, but this girl completely misunderstands him and thinks that he's actually claiming to be the Avatar. Aang, being a solid wingman, or I guess windman in this case, completely goes along with it and even helps Sokka pretend to airbend in order to impress this extremely shallow girl. She's super into it though, even claiming that Sokka is her boyfriend. You know, less than five minutes after rejecting him and without her even mentioning her name. And by the way, she never gives her name for this entire comic. When being introduced to the girl's parents, this whole situation goes to Sokka's head, and he claims that Aang is his servant and that Toph and Katara are his sidekicks. Plus, when word gets out around town that Sokka is quote-unquote the Avatar, they come to him for help and advice. However, the town also wanted some demonstrations of Sokka's bending prowess, which leads to Toph and Katara making an absolute fool out of him by deliberately 
messing up the tricks. All of this commotion attracted the attention of some hunters who incapacitate Sokka thinking that he's the Avatar in order to sell him to the Fire Nation, which naturally means that Sokka's cover needs to be blown as the benders step in to save the day. But actually, no, since the girl thought that Sokka was doing all of the bending himself because he was being a good person and letting his servants have the spotlight for themselves for once. Of course, this leads to a very comedic ending where the rest of Team Avatar is finally fed up with Sokka's lives and are going to expose him, but we never actually get to see that on panel. Dirty is only skin deep. Fun fact, this is the first time that the Japanese duo Guri Hiru worked on an Avatar comic. They also did a few more of these short stories as well that we'll be covering later in the video, but they ended up becoming the series' main artist once the Avatar series got more serious long-running comics. Anyway, this story is Team Avatar washing up in a river, but Toph prefers to stay dirty, claiming that it's a protective layer of dirt that all earthbenders should have. Katara tries to force Toph to take a bath, but she adamantly refuses, which leads to a very funny bending battle. It turns out that Toph has a crippling fear of water because she can't swim, and when Katara parts the lake to make her feel more comfortable, Toph gets mud all over everyone. Divided we fall. Team Avatar is flying through a heavy storm, and even though Aang is bending the wind and water out of the way, it's still really rough and they crash. The team is separated, and Aang gets attacked by Viper Bats. Meanwhile, Sokka and Katara are attacked by bandits, but manage to escape. Toph and Momo, on the other hand, are taken in by a kind old lady who treats them like royalty. Sokka and Katara meet up with Toph, but when Aang shows up, he thinks that everyone is being held hostage and overreacts. Turns out that the tower used to be an orphanage, and the old lady just missed having children to care for. And after a warm meal, the gang was free to go. Reach for the Toph! It's just a King of the Hill fight between Team Avatar, which is a little lopsided since Toph can literally move the hill. It's only natural. Now that the Earth King and his bear Bosco are no longer living in the palace, Sokka takes it upon himself to teach Bosco how to be a real bear. Comedy ensues as it doesn't work out. However, after realizing that there's so much that he doesn't know about the world, the Earth King and Bosco decide to live as commoners and try to embrace the lifestyle. Going home again. With Ba Sing Se conquered, Azula appoints Ju Dee as the supreme bureaucratic administrator and prepares to go home to the Fire Nation. Zuko, on the other hand, has fallen in love with the city and wants to stay. In order to manipulate her brother into coming home, Azula recruits Tai Lee to try and get Zuko and Mai reacquainted, hoping to use that puppy love as a bargaining chip. The two of them try to orchestrate a fancy dinner, but it's neither Zuko or Mai's cup of tea, so they leave it behind for a night on the town. The couple bumps into Jin, you know, that girl that Zuko previously had been on a date with when he was disguising himself as a man named Lee. In order to keep his cover, Zuko claims that Mai is a knife thrower in the circus, and in her typical fashion, Mai takes this opportunity to mess with Zuko by placing a fish on his head and lobbing an icicle at it with perfect precision. However, she also offers Jin a chance to throw an icicle which startles Zuko and causes him to fall into a nearby fountain. This night out ended up being an incredible time for Mai and Zuko, which led to them sharing a kiss. And when Mai explains that she'll be returning home, Zuko decides to come along as well. The Bridge Katara tends to Aang, who was recently put into a coma during his battle with Azula. But avoiding the Fire Nation ships was becoming more and more difficult, so Sokka comes up with the brilliant plan of commandeering an enemy ship and using it to blend in. They achieve this by destroying their own fleet to let the Fire Nation think that they were defeated, and when the enemy least expected it, they raided their ship in the dead of night and took it over. Leading to... Private Fire Sokka tries to learn more about the Fire Nation so that he can better understand how to defeat them, but spying on regular, everyday people isn't working. So instead, he joins the Fire Nation's army as Private Wang Fire, thinking that he could learn the basics for a couple of weeks and then leave. He is really, really bad at training, and comedy ensues. One night when shoveling poop, though, Sokka overhears that despite having minimal experience, his unit was going to be shipped out to the front lines as cannon fodder. Hoping to avoid this fate, Sokka makes a run for it, but is branded as a criminal for deserting his post. The army was very quickly able to track and catch up to Sokka just as he arrived at Team Avatar's hideout, and in an attempt to cover for himself, he claimed that he was tracking some enemy earth and waterbenders that were infiltrating the country. Sokka bravely runs into the cave to fight off the benders, but in reality, Toph bends an escape out the back of the cave and collapses the tunnel behind her, which causes the army to think that Private Wang Fire heroically died in the field of battle. And now, he lives on as a hero. 
Night Animals. Appa and Momo scare off some Fire Nation soldiers while the rest of the team is asleep. Boys Day Out. Getting restless of staying in camp, Katara takes Toph out to what is basically the Salty Spittoon, but they're turned away for being women. Naturally, they disguise themselves as men, keeping up tough personas by riding the bar's mechanical bull and challenging everyone they come across to fights. All of this was pretty socially draining though, so the girls came back to camp and have a mud bath instead. Ember Island Arcade. Zuko and Azula play an Avatar-themed Rock'em Sock'em robot game, and firebending into the controller activates a super move. Zuko gets a little overeager and completely torches the game. Monster Slayer. Team Avatar needs some extra cash, and when some kids in town claim that they saw a monster in the forest, Sokka, thinking that the monster was just Appa, claims to be a monster slayer and volunteers to slay the beast for a price. Turns out, though, that the monster was actually a ferocious armadillo bear. But luckily, Appa shows up and fights it off while Sokka was off in hiding. With a flick of his tail, Appa saves the day and is showered with gifts by the town. Combustion Man on a Train Aang and Sokka ride a train with a scared little girl, but unbeknownst to them, Combustion Man was also aboard hunting them. Aang and Combustion Man fight, and the conductor gets knocked out in the commotion, causing the train to almost crash until Sokka is able to stop it. Of course, Aang finishes off his opponent, and the day is saved. Sword Bending Sokka and Zuko have a sword fighting duel. Wait, sorry, I mean a sword bending duel. Despite being trained by a master, Zuko kicks Sokka's ass over and over again. During one of these matches, Sokka is disarmed, but he beats Zuko with his boomerang. Granted, Sokka still lost because he cheated, but at least he got Zuko to call it sword bending, which was victory enough. No benders allowed. Jealous of the benders going off all the time on their own adventures, Sokka forms a club for the non-benders of the group, the Bendless Boomerangers Club. The club seem to be having a lot of fun with their snacks, toys, and fun hats. I mean, hell, Sokka was even teaching them how to use boomerangs, which is something that he's never even shown Aang how to do. Eventually, Aang got fed up and begged to join the club, which ended up not being much of an issue because Sokka already let the other benders join as long as they recited the club's oath. Love is a battlefield. Aang is having a hard time processing the kiss that he and Katara shared. He wants to discuss things, but Katara clearly does not, and that is messing with him hardcore. Katara instead wants to focus on Aang's training to take on the Fire Lord, but her constantly dodging the subject of their kiss caused Aang to walk away in frustration. Dragon Days After learning firebending from the dragons, Aang had a flashback to when he and his friend Kuzan went looking for one in the past. When they approached the dragon's den, the young bender discovered poachers that were trying to steal dragon eggs, but they teamed up and were able to stop them. Though, when returning the egg to its nest, the dragon thought that Aang was one of the poachers. However, after Aang saved the egg from nearly being shattered, the dragon recognized the misunderstanding and let them go. Game Time It's literally just Team Avatar playing hide and seek, but there is a funny gag of Zuko thinking that the game is actually hide and shriek. Boomy vs. Toph Offended that Suki called Boomy the greatest earthbender of all time, Toph and Boomy have a bending battle. The fight is intense from the get-go, but the resulting earthquakes shatter the entire camp. It got so bad that their location was going to easily be discovered by the Fire Nation. However, Toph and Boomy were so ingrained in the heat of battle that they couldn't hear everyone's pleas to stop. Eventually, the team was able to break up the fight, but considering that it couldn't actually be completed, it had to result in a tie. Okay, I think that was all of them. Yeah, that's right. I forgot there's a couple of stories that aren't in continuity, but since they're in the comic book itself, I guess I need to talk about them. But thankfully, they're actually pretty cute. New Recruits So Nick Magazine had a contest for kids to create their own original Avatar characters, with the winners getting the opportunity to have them in an Avatar comic. Well, this is that. There's Anale, the Shadowbender, Hiroshi, an Earthbender who is an expert at tunneling, Genji, a character with a rock dragon, Visola, a waterbender with unique weapons, and Riley, a cookie dough bender. Okay, that's actually pretty great. So the last comic for real is Gym Time, which is drawn up in the chibi style of the super deformed shorts that were included in the DVD releases. This one is just a quick comic where the main characters play dodgeball with Zuko as the ball. Okay, there's actually one more thing because the collected edition of these comics also includes concept art from the show, which I think is a very cool and worthwhile bonus for this book. So that was a lot of content to cover, but I actually really like what this book has to offer. It's 
it's really neat that the majority of stories weren't about Aang, and it lets the equally great secondary characters get more of a chance to shine. Plus, while they weren't totally necessary, I do think that these comics served as a great vehicle to fill in the minor plot details that were left out by the show, while still delivering on some great gags and stories. I mean, seriously, why does The Great Divide get to be a full episode of the show, but Relics, Sokka the Avatar, and Private Fire don't get to be? What I'm trying to say is that the more serious Avatar comics are great and all, but if you're a fan of the series, then you really, really should give The Lost Adventures a chance. I know that due to the nature of this book being an anthology series, that this video was kind of all over the place, but if you enjoyed any of this at all, then you definitely should go pick this up for yourself. I actually have links to it down there in the description down below for both the physical and digital versions of the comic, and actually buying it through my link does help out the channel, so... I mean, I'd appreciate it. But also, like, do you enjoy hearing me talk about Avatar comics? Because if so, I really would like to cover the more serious books in the future. You know, the ones that take place after the last episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. So, you know, let me know, yes or no, down there in the comments down below. And if you like this video, like, maybe consider watching another one, or maybe even subscribing if you really enjoyed it. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.